Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode here on Eat Sleep Brief. In this week's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to hook up the KHD Director. If you guys missed the first video on the KHD, be sure to check it out. In this video, we're just going to show you guys how to hook it up to your tank. So to get started, you're going to have to obviously locate the KHD, the doser, uh, the PAB cable, the Y splitter, and the power supply. A quick tip, if you wish for the wires to take up a little bit less space, especially if you're mounting it close to a wall, you can actually zip tie uh, the wires like I show here. Now the KHD can be installed in a stack or side-by-side -side format depending on your space in the cabinet. Also if you already own a standalone unit 2.1 doser all you need is a KHD unit so it's kind of saving you a little bit of money. You're going to want to locate your Y splitter and connect it to the KHD and doser followed by the power supply. Next you're going to want to install the PAB, uh, PAB cable to any of the two ports on the KHD and the doser. The leftover PAB port is if you want to daisy chain it to a Profilux 4 controller if you wish to do so. Now guys I've said this before the KHD unit is a standalone uh, testing unit it does not require a controller uh, so this is just again if you wish to, con uh, to connect it to a Profilux 4 controller. Now here you can see the PH probe connection as well as the vent connection. Now this is just an emergency drain for the KHT unit. If you wish to program your unit via PC, you can do it via this USB port located here. You're going to want to locate the silicone lines. The first input on the KHT as well as the first doser head is for the sample water coming from the tank. Second input on the KHT and second doser head is for the reagent. The third on the KHD and the third doser head is for your wastewater. Now it's very important that you cut these to the correct length for your system to operate correctly. And the sizes are as follows. Sample water silicone is 16 centimeters. Reagent silicone is 17 centimeters. Wastewater silicone is 17 centimeters. Now installing this to the KHD is very simple. You will see a press locking system when you remove the plastic nut. You're going to want to insert this plastic piece over the silicone, noting the orientation, followed by the plastic nut. You don't need to over tighten it, just a nice snug fig will actually be enough. Here you can see a better idea of how to connect the KHD to the doser, paying attention to the orientation. The wastewater is the only one that goes opposite of the first two as it pulls water from the KHD into the waste container. One of the last steps to do is going to put the end barbs or nipples, whatever you want to call it, to the doser heads. You're going to notice it is quite of, of a tight fit. It's going to take a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of saliva, but this is just to guarantee that the doser head is able to hold its prime so no air bubbles creep up on you. So one thing I also want to mention because I haven't talked about yet, you're going to notice that I've talked about every single head on the doser but the last head. So the last head is intended for you to dose alkalinity from that channel whether or not you want the KH director to take full control and do the dosing automatically or if you want to do it manually or on a schedule it's meant uh, to do that so for you guys out there that were wondering what the last head's for if you do want it to take care of alkalinity it can or you can do have it do whatever else you want you know whether another element or anything of that sort once you're done, you can go ahead and hook up the KHD to the doser heads themselves. Again, using this diagram to make sure you plug everything in correctly. This gives you the orientation and what should be going where. To program your doser via the GHL app, make sure you download the app. Head over to your Wi-Fi page and wait for the doser to populate. Once it does, click on it. You will have to hit the Add Device on the bottom, followed by clicking the 2.1 doser icon. Here you can give the unit any name you wish. Lastly, press add on the bottom. Now you will see the doser on my devices. Click on it and you will be taken to the dashboard page. On the top right you will see a brush. Click on this followed by the plus icon and scroll till you see KHT and press add. You can now hit the check mark on the top right to save this. Now is a good time to mount your unit only because when you do the calibration it's recommended for the hose to already be installed with the right length just so the calibration is a lot more accurate. So once you've found where your unit's going to be and you're happy with that location, be sure to power up your unit. 
Next, you will need to connect everything as well as prime the lines so we can get them ready for calibration. Start by connecting the first head, which will be responsible for the sample water coming from the tank. Next, the reagent bottle, as this will go to pump 2. Make sure you use the provided PVC hose and not the silicone for the reagent. Also, be sure to keep this hose no longer than 20 inches. A little over is okay. Make sure there's no kinks, no dips in this hose. It should be as straight as possible. Here you can see a mod I made for the reagent bottle to ensure the hose stays snug. I also drilled a small breather hole. A body reamer was made to open the main hole bigger as well as making the vent hole. This step is not required, just something I personally did. Another quick tip is how you cut your hose. It's a little bit difficult to see here, uh, but I kind of did. It's, it's a cut from the right and a cut from the left kind of to come to a point. This is just going to ensure that when the hose is in the reagent bottle, there's no way it can ever uh, get stuck to a wall where it's not pulling um, any liquid out because obviously that's something you're not going to want. Another thing I did is I marked it with painter's tape. This just lets me know how far in I need to push it. So obviously I don't push it too far or don't push it in enough because we want to make sure it's as far as it'll go. The last thing, this is an idea here if you need to boost your bottle higher to, again, not be longer than the 20 inches recommended for the reagent line. This is just something I did. Now will be a good time to connect the line coming from the reagent bottle. Again, this is the PVC line, not the silicone line, to the second doser head. This doser head is going to be responsible for pulling the reagent down from the bottle into the KHD. For the last and final head, this is going to be the wastewater. So this is going to take the wastewater from the KHD down into your waste container. So be sure you have one of those on hand. You may notice I'm not using the silicone line for the first and the third doser. Um, you can use it and actually I recommend it. If you are going to use the RO line, the only reason I did it is because it's red. If you are going to use it, be sure you watch my uh, doser video. I previously made how to convert your doser to RO lines because you are going to need to use some glue to ensure that obviously uh, they don't come out. It's going to be a good idea to also pull out everything going into the KHD because we, when we are manually priming the lines, we don't want it connected to the KHD director. Now that we have everything connected, we must prime the lines. Start with the first head, followed by the second and the third. Priming them is easy. All you got to do is hit the manual button on the left of the doser to the corresponding channel you're wanting to prime. The last line, being the waste line, will not have a water source to get water from, so I use a small cup of water. Click on the top left where you will see a submenu appear. Here you will hit the dosing pump button, click on the dosing pump 1, and give this pump a name. Make sure the speed of this pump is set to 3, and click save. When calibrating the head, make sure you have a graduated cylinder. I'll have a link to one in the bio. Grab the silicone tube that is responsible for sending water to the KHD and put it into the graduated cylinder and press calibrate pump. Let the pump run till it turns off and see how much was dispensed. Put that value in the flow rate of pump. Repeat the same step for pump 2. Be sure for pump 2 that the speed is set to 0 and press save. Hit the calibrate pump and then put the value dispensed in the flow rate of pump. For the last pump, pump number 3, repeat the same exact steps as for pump 1. Once you're done calibrating, you can empty out all the liquid from pump 1 and pump 3. Pump 2 should be the only one that's left prime, and this is the one with the reagent. Now you can connect all three lines to the corresponding ports in the KHD. Now is also a good time to connect the emergency drain in the back of the KHD to the waste container. Be sure the emergency tube going into the waste container is above the water line. Now it's time to set the fill container for pump 2, read the reagent line, and pump 3 for the waste container. This will ensure that the cage monitors and tells you when either is full or emptied. Heading back to the main menu, click on the doser pumps, then pump 2. In the capacity, type in 500 milliliters if you have the 500 milliliter bottle. In the minimum box, you're able to set the lowest threshold for it to send you an alert if you hit the alarm if below minimum button. Lastly, click save. Be sure box is checked for container is emptied so the KHD note to subtract the value. Lastly, click refill container 
and input what your bottle currently has. Then click save. For the waste container we will do the same going back to dosing pump 3. Make sure the box is checked for container is filled. This is going to make sure that the KHD adds the value up, obviously not subtracting. Then input your capacity followed by your minimum. Now the minimum here is going to be a little bit different because it's essentially going to be a high, in my case it's about 3,785 milliliters. So the maximum uh, I'm going to want to get an alert is about 3,000. So it's kind of a little bit different than doing the reagent. It takes a little bit, uh, a little bit more thinking here, uh, but you'll get the idea. Also, make sure the alarm if above max is checked and press save. One of the final steps will be to enable the KHT. So go back to the menus, click on dashboard, and click on the KHT. Make sure you check the enable KHD button and click save. You're going to want to make sure you connect the pH probe to the back of the unit if you haven't already done so. To calibrate the probe, locate the pH 4 and 7. It's a good idea to pour these in a small cup so you don't contaminate the whole solution. It's also a good idea to get a small rinse cup with RO water so you can rinse them in between solutions. I recommend to let the probe sit in the 4 solution for a little, then you can click calibrate electrode. Wait for that to finish and the screen will tell you to then put it in the solution 7. Be sure to rinse beforehand. Wait for the calibration to finish, then click save calibration. To confirm the calibration was done correctly, you can leave the probe in each solution for 2-4 to four minutes and ensure that the pH value reading is within 0 0.02 of each solution. You are able to choose aside from the default number how much sample water is used. GHL recommends from 50 to 80 milliliters for the best accuracy. After you set the water sample test, you must set the sample tube volume. Click on the calculator icon and fill in the information. If using the provided silicone tubing, the inner diameter is 4 millimeters and measure whatever length the tube is for the water sample. It's important you include the line on the doser head itself, which is a little beige tubing, and this measures 4.7 inches, so be very careful and make sure you also include that to this measurement. Once done, you'll notice the system will auto-populate and then make sure you press apply, then save. We're now ready for the first test. Be sure all lines are hooked up correctly. Click flush measurement cell. While this is happening, make sure there is no leaks, especially on the pH probe. If there is, press cancel current action and hit the empty measurement cell completely button. If the leak is coming from the pH probe, you can use Vaseline around the o-ring to make a better seal. If you wish for the unit to control your alkalinity, you will need to run the fourth head with your alkalinity solution. Go to the control tab and type in what level you want the unit to maintain. If you don't want to control, click on control mode and choose Disable Control Cage Measurement Only. When complete, press Save. If you wish to get an alarm, go back to General. Under Alarm, choose the Monitor Active button. If you want the KHD to shut off once an alarm has been triggered, click the Deactivate Control during Alarm button. Then press Save. Below, you will be able to set the minimum and max limits. When complete, press save. Under time schedule you're able to choose from 0 to 24 tests per day as well as the starting time. If you choose more than one test per day the unit will automatically divide the times by the time of the day. When done press save. If you wish to adjust the final result of the KHD to match your favorite tester you can do that here. The unit allows anywhere from plus minus 30 percent of the final result. So now you're able to perform a test. Manual testing is able to be done at any time. That's very simple. Just go again to the uh, main dashboard for the KHD and you hit start measurement now. The app doesn't need to be open. You can close it. You can pretty much do whatever you want. It's going to perform its test. Once it's done, it's going to record it. Now another cool feature I recommend you guys enabling is the record measurement values. This is just going to chart it out. You're going to see a menu kind of on the top right that says chart. 
and you're going to be able to see your values here. Obviously, the first day, it's not going to show anything because, again, it's just one day. You're going to have to let a few days pass so it can actually start uh, charting those values. And you can actually start uh, tracking what measurement you are getting. A quick point I do want to give you guys. On the first test, mine gave me an error that said too long titration. Uh, pretty much I figured it was a new unit. It didn't have much liquid ran through it, so I figured I'd let me do another test. Sure enough, on the second, third, every test after that, it's been fine. So if you do get that error on the first test, again, it's normal just because a lot of the lines were dry. Everything uh, was dry, so the unit obviously had to get some liquid in it and get going. And that's just, again, if it happens on the first time, just redo the test and you should be good to go. Obviously, I'm going to have a follow-up video in the future with any pointers, anything I learned on the system, any recommendations I have. And I'm sure you guys want to see the long term uh, of this unit running. I will tell you I'm very excited to finally have a controller that pretty much controls and measures alkalinity for me on this tank. As we know, alkalinity is one of those parameters that we just cannot let go either up or down it needs to be very consistent i think ghl did a great job here creating the khd more importantly it's a standalone unit so if you're like me you don't have a lot of room uh, you know you don't need a controller of course if you want to buy the ghl controller by all means you're more than welcome to do so but this unit is able to stand alone it doesn't need any other equipment other than its own so if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please leave them down in the comment box below i really hope you guys enjoyed this video Thank you each and every one of you very much for watching. As always, happy reefing.